Oh, hello there. This is a 1961 Thunderbird. I'd like to talk to you about it. It's rich history, it's amazing options, and the things that propelled the Thunderbird forward in the future, early in the 60s. The 1961 Thunderbird was the third generation of Thunderbirds, after the square bottom bird that had followed the 1955 original Thunderbird. In 1961, came stock with a 390 V8, boasting 300 horsepower. stated, the 390 V8 had 300 horsepower. It was standard in the 61 Thunderbird, the only engine available that year. Secondary years, 62 and 63, would involve slightly higher powered versions of the same engine. But this was the only way you were going to get down the road in this vehicle. The Thunderbird had unique styling options, such as the headlights that were removed by the previous owner. But it also came standard with a hood scoop allowing for major airflow to go into the V8 engine. The car itself had a lot of chrome on the front lip of the hood, a bumper inlaid into the body, and then along the fin, the fin that cascades all the way down. And as it goes down, the chrome features would even be embedded into the body styling itself, becoming door handles with a simple push button. This created a futuristic look that swept down the whole body, creating a bullet shape, giving the car the nomenclature of the bullet bird. The fin itself carried all the way along the body, completing a sleek look, making a bullet shape, considering this to be a bullet bird. Jet age culture and design inspired the rear with these jet turbine-like taillights on both ends to finish off a futuristic sleek design from front to finish. The roof itself is reminiscent of the square birds, having a similar shape and usually having Thunderbird emblems to let you know what you were driving, if you didn't already. The trunk contained the spare tire, slanted in there so that it wouldn't have to be mounted on the outside like the 56 Thunderbirds and some of the square body Thunderbirds. It made for a nice, sleek design yet again. The gas cap itself was hidden in the rear bumper to remove any kind of obstruction on the outside design that people would find distasteful. Well, we had to take a break. Turns out as you're talking about Thunderbirds, the first thing that happens is thunder and lightning. Arizona monsoons are rapid and inconsistent. So, car's a little wet now, but we're going to resume talking about this wonderful vehicle. The Thunderbird began its history in 1955, starting as a two-seat convertible, the first two-seat Ford since 1938. Largely developed to compete with the Corvette displayed at the New York Auto Show in 1953. Corvettes were developed to compete with the popularity of European sports cars. The Thunderbird was considered a personal luxury vehicle and opened the doors, making a mass market segment. Though it's opinion only, the third generation of the Thunderbird is one of the better generations. The second generation, the Square Bird, was hideous in my opinion and took away all the beauty of the first generation. Though the second generation was one of the first unibody cars made by Ford and they would carry on to that design with the third generation bullet birds. The third generation Thunderbird was designed and styled mostly by Bill Boyer. It had the FE engine in it, which was the Ford Edsel engine. And it was an engine that they would use from 1958 all the way to 1967. It was designed to be expanded, manufactured for both side and top oiling and ranged in displacements from 332 to 427 cubic inches. In 1961, it was the Indy 500 pace car and prominently featured in JFK's inaugural parade. 
The third generation Thunderbird was built in the plant in Wixom, Michigan that was made for the production of the second generation T-Birds, Lincolns, and Mercuries. Several firsts for the automobile market came with the 1961 Thunderbird. Swing away steering wheel, floating rear view mirror, and options included for purchase were AC, power windows, power seats, AM FM radio, fender skirts, and white wall tires. The interior of the car was actually ahead of its time, featuring bucket seats that were considered an option on most vehicles. Thunderbird came standard with power steering, power brakes, and backup lights, costly options on other vehicles at the time. Ford wanted a car that came ready to go. It had a center console that reached all the way through the car to the rear, containing both cigarette lighter and ashtray and a large glove box. AC was not standard, but heat was, thankfully for the winter people that would purchase these vehicles. Just under 215,000 bullet birds were produced. This one itself was made in raven black, and as said before, came with a 390 in its standard. It had been built on Halloween day in 1960, therefore alluding to the beautiful black color it will be again one day. This is, what I would have to say, the car I've always wanted, besides a 55 T-Bird, but I know not to dream too big. Uh, it's getting kind of loopy. Oh, hi there. I'd like to talk to you about my new car. I'm very excited to show it to you. <laughs> its design... Its design... Well, its design was modeled after the jet age. Giving the car the nomenclature of the bullet bird. Its predecessor being the square bird. As you come down the vehicle, you can see that the jet age inspired design. Jet engine turbine taillights cap off the futuristic look. The roof itself is similar to the square bird's roof. Similar to the square bird's roof. And the fin itself carried all the way along the body, creating an entire uh, <laughs> try that again. <laughs> Action. <laughs> <laughs>